now that the assessment is complete uh, from the data gathering, we'll review a couple methods we can use to review the results and how we can uh, send results to other uh, groups for review. We know we've uh, selected the mini bill uh, trainee folder and if we just click on review session results we're looking at the first session and using the select box we'll select that session and now we see uh, the trend lines which show each sample over the six minutes. So here's the first pair, second pair, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And we can look for some general things. For example, you see theta going from higher to lower and alpha also going from higher to lower, roughly as we would expect as we go from a frontal to a, uh, a more uh, posterior EEG. This is helpful for viewing. We could also go to the settings and look at the text format. And here we now see all eight components, delta, theta, alpha, low beta, beta, high beta, gamma, and the user band. These are all being reported. Uh, we're looking at the FFT data right now, and the scale is peak to peak. So these are useful numbers for us to use for comparison or review purposes uh, as necessary uh, and as appropriate. We also see channel 1 and channel 2 shown for each minute. So there are a total of 12 entries, minute 1 channel 1, minute 1 channel 2, and so on right down the line. Now there's a limit to how much you can gain by looking at the numeric displays and the graphs, so we have some other methods available for reviewing. The first thing I want to mention is, of course, this folder could be emailed to someone quite easily, simply again using the session librarian, create an archive, we'll hit OK, the archive is now created, and we'll email it. And we'll then send this to any of a number of possible locations. Keep in mind now that uh, the MiniQ data can be reviewed by a, a variety of different organizations, uh, including Neural Performance Institute, Q Metrics, the Learning Curve, Applied Neuroscience, or other uh, entities that uh, we're happy to help you locate. Having found one of them, you can email this file and they will be able to review it. In addition, we've got some review capabilities built into the system which are helpful. If we simply close the software right now, you can go into my computer and look on the disk directly. Look at C drive, brainm.20, go to studies, and you will see the study, there it is, mini bill is a folder, and we'll double click on that and we'll ask for view details which is a better way to see this and now we see what's been put into this folder as a result of our study. We have all the EEG files in a row. This is the raw EEG data and there are six files, one for each of the trials. One, two, three, four, five, six. In addition for each file there's something called a key file which can be used to get information about how that EEG was acquired. There's the name file and there's something called a QAT file, a QAT file, and this is a .csv file, meaning comma-separated variables. This is the file that you want to look at in order to review a mini-Q. QAT stands for Quantitative Assessment Tool. So if we simply double-click on this, what we'll find is, because Excel is loaded on our computer, because Excel knows what to do with a file like this, here are the mini-Q records loaded in. For each run, we have a total of six entries. First of all, we have the number of points, which is the number of seconds, and we see that it's 60. We also see the site identified, FZ, CZ, or as a pair, FZ and CZ. For each electrode site, we have the mean, which is the mean value using the digital filters, and we also have the mean with an F, that's from the FFT, the Fast Fourier Transform. Again, these values are expected to differ. They'll vary in a systematic manner, and they're meant to be compared. We have FZ, CZ, and then for the pair FZ, CZ, we have the coherence value, which is a number between 0 and 100, indicating how coherent the EEG is at that frequency. And finally, we have the asymmetry measure, which is a ratio between the left and right sides, or in this case, between FZ and CZ. 
Going down the list, we see that for each of these pairs, we have all those values, and they've been collected and written out into the CSV file. Moving to the right, we see that in addition to the delta, theta, alpha, low beta, beta, high beta, gamma, and user, we give the theta to alpha ratio, the theta to low beta ratio, theta to beta, and the alpha to beta. These are useful ratios for assessment purposes. So this summarizes the information that's available in what we call the QUAT file, the quantitative assessment tool. And these numbers can be analyzed using macros, uh, printed out, uh, or used in any manner you see fit in order to aid your assessment of your client's EEG. What we've seen in this example is a very simple six-minute mini-assessment in which for each electrode pair on the selector, we've taken one minute of EEG and analyzed it. This is the starting point, and the mini Q can be used in other ways that are more flexible. For example, if you set up a file with a run length of three minutes, then it will acquire three minutes at each electrode position, then prompt you to move on. This would be useful, for example, if you were going to do one minute eyes open, one minute eyes closed, and one minute in a task situation thereby gathering data which reflect these different changes. Uh, alternatively, you could gather six minutes eyes closed in one uh, session, six minutes eyes open in another session, and uh, another six minutes on task if you choose. The advantage to running them together in the previous example is that the 18 minutes of data would all be collected into one file and it would be straightforward to process that and look for EEG changes relative to eyes open, eyes closed, and task, uh, for example, uh, which is a significant improvement in being able to come up with a good assessment.